Now I know what you're thinking, what a simple build to me. Essentially what I mean is not using too many parts in a build. Using more primarily CCBS designs, using parts that are more readily available in today's LEGO sets that are released. Sort of building stuff on a budget to a, to a degree. So I guess I mean a lot of things by simple builds. I essentially mean here's some stuff that you yourself can build that isn't too complicated, it's fairly easy, and that's easy and accessible to everyone. So simple builds, that's what I mean by this episode. Hi, welcome to the Bionicle Inspiration series, a series where we showcase some builds from the LEGO community and get you inspired for some builds that you will build in the future, most likely. And of course, when I say simple mock, I'm not trying to undermine the build style. I actually think simple mocks are freaking amazing. I think the building techniques and things that are put into simple mocks are brilliant. And honestly, I think there should be more of them. You know, as cool as a really complex complex mock is that's maybe taken hours and years even to build. It's always cool to just see a quick little CCBS frame with, you know, some Hero Factory armor placed on it, because sometimes simple is just better, isn't it? And that's essentially what I'm going to sort of explore a little bit in this episode today. So let's actually begin with the first mock, which is Takanuva by Artiri Karpinski. Yeah, yeah, I'll go with that. This mock is actually made through, well, there's a few different ways that it could have been made. It could have been made through LDD, LEGO Digital Designer, or it could have been made on stud.io, stu studio, studio, that is a sort of digital rendering very similar to LEGO Digital Design build system that you can use on the LEGO website, Bricklink. Obviously, most of you will know Bricklink from the place where you buy all the good parts for really cheap, but they have also, uh, within, I believe, last year, introduced a sort of LDD style system that you can use with it, where you can digitally build using access to heaps of different parts. Um, and yeah, you're able to build over that and get a digital render and stuff like that. And I believe, someone correct me if I'm wrong, you are even able to, once you've built something, then whatever the parts you've used in that mock, you are then able to find those directly from Bricklink stores. I think, I hope that's right, because if it is, that's badass. So someone someone correct me if that's, uh, if that's true or not. But anyway, that's another alternative. You know, who says you need to build in reality? Maybe you want to use a Lego digital program to prototype a build or to play with some stuff if you're not sure about it or maybe you don't have the parts and so build it digitally that way you can still be building and you can digitally render the images as well and make them look absolutely beautiful like this photo looks so there's another alternative so what i really like about this mock is so we're going from the angle today in this episode with using more simple techniques not going too over the top not too custom just sticking to the sort of very rudimentary traditional style that is what bionicle or ccbs or hero factory is as sets essentially and what i really like about this mock is that the limbs are very not custom. They just use bare bone, Hero Factory bones, and shell armor and stuff like that. But all up, it looks fantastic. It's extremely poseable too, which is awesome because having really poseable mocks helps them have more character and generally they just look much cooler like that, don't they? So I think that's really cool is to, to do that, to find all sorts of cool ways to layer the Hero Factory armor and even some Bionicle armor like we can see on the ankle there. And essentially from there, yeah, you can just kind of go hand bone on other parts in the mock. And that's something I really like that this mock has done. The torso on this mock is obviously very custom, but the rest is a little bit more simplistic, but everything blends so nicely and flows so well together. You know, even adding a little bit of system on the waist there and, you know, every everything just looks nice, doesn't it? So I think that's really smart is to have, you know, maybe one or two parts that you, you, you maybe put a little bit of more complexity into. There's also kind of areas there where you can kind of take the back road and, you know, not have to worry too much about it being super custom and super amazing and have amazing techniques. Because at the end of the day, if you're having fun and it makes you happy to build it, do it. And I think this is the best way to do that. It doesn't require too many parts. It's fun. It's easy. It's super poseable. It's a win, 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 win. It's great. Something else I really like about this is the awesome, awesome, awesome head design. It's uh, essentially a brick-built Takanuva of Voki mask looks fantastic. Very much reminds me of the old Mask of Light movie. This almost looks like a sort of recreation of that from the movie, which is awesome. What a great idea to recreate it in that build style. And even cooler because, you know, maybe you don't have a specific mask you're after. Why not build it out of system? I mean, system is a lot more smaller parts that, you know, is a little bit a Bionicle doesn't really have as many smaller parts, so it's uh, definitely a good idea to to do that, to build a brick-built mask, because you're able to achieve so much. I mean, this almost looks exactly like the actual Evoki, uh, and it's made out of, of, of Lego bricks. Fantastic, isn't it? And I mean, the simple way to connect the Lego bricks would be adding in various Technic bricks that have the various connection points, whether it's a pin or an axle or whatever. So absolutely perfect, isn't it? So yeah, I think this is a fantastic example of more 
I still feel like I'm confusing the concept a little bit, but the sort of simple build style that's very similar to a set and doesn't doesn't break the bank, doesn't require too much complexity, but you still have a very awesome mock in the end. And just but quickly before we finish up with Takanuva here, here's a couple other mocks by the same builder that he's done, a few more digital renders and stuff, all of them with awesome brick-built masks, even have some other Lego elements on them, like some really cool robes and a little shoulder armor and stuff like that. Looks fantastic. So who says you even need to revamp Takanuva or any, any kind of set? You can make your own custom characters and give them so much life with brick-built masks. It looks fantastic. So definitely check out some of this other guy's work because he's got a lot of really cool digitally designed mocks. The next mock that we have today is by Johan Dekish and is called The Last Hunter. Now, what I really, really like about this is, again, who says it needs to be custom? The last mock used a lot of sort of CCBS parts, whereas this uses more traditional Bionicle parts, and that's brilliant. Everybody these days tends to go super, super custom, so it's so refreshing to see a build like this today. Something that I think is one of the biggest takeaways I have from this mock is there's a lot of character with it and a lot of what I'm going to kind of refer to as like accent points. You know, he's got a belt which has like spears and what looks like ammo for his gun on it. He's got this arm that's red and like contaminated and, you know, almost looks like it's been infected or something. Looks super, super cool. And then he's got his cape and all sorts of other things like that. He's got little things that really stand out and kind of tell a lot about the character to me. You know, I, I look at this mock and go, oh, well, ooh, that's such a cool arm design. Like, what's he got going on there? Is he, is he being, like, infected with some sort of, like, alien symbiote or something? He's awesome stuff like that. I think that that brings so much more life to the mock. And... It's so clever and so cool to be able to do that is to, to, to add on little points of interest like a little ammo belt or a really, really cool gun or a weapon or something or, you know, change up an arm design. Maybe he has a robotic arm or a, a peg leg or, you know, some sort of like this and uh, a different colored mutated arm of some kind. Adding little points of interest like that can can take a design that's otherwise very simple into something really, really cool by just adding a little subtle minor detail just giving it a few accent points a few little little things like that you know they say the devil is in the details and i think that that this mock is very much an example of that this mock really comes to life because of the little details that it has on it and i think that that's such a clever idea is to put that into your own mocks and add as much detail as you can change things up see how you can incorporate something into a story and then make that character really unique in some way. That's really, really cool. So awesome, awesome job, Johan. The final mock that we have today is by Lois Nuva and is called Kithergal and Kehuzand. So this is like a, I, I guess it's an Okotan, you know, a Batoran from Okota, and a little beast guy. And I think they look fantastic. Again, uh, more, more looking at the, the rider here, it's just the little details again, like adding some tires or the little bits of detail at the top there, using the minifigure hands and the heart light and stuff like that. Little, little details that really take this this build up to another level, make it look even cooler. Also cool to see just, uh, again, another CCBS frame with another custom torso, but then adding little things like the system parts and even tires and stuff to really make everything flow nicely together and have a nice sort of coherent shape and flow and, and, and everything like that. And I think, again, looks fantastic, really gets the job done. Also cool to see such an awesome weapon. Again, what we were talking about with accent points, really cool to see something that makes the mock stand out, add a lot of sort of visual interest. So that's fantastic. Definitely something else that this mock has, which is so cool, is the Beast Companion. You know, looking at this photo here, you can see that it's got a saddle and he's even used a lot of system there to sort of differentiate the fact that, you know, a saddle is very different texture-wise and shaping-wise to the rest of the mock. And so I think it's a very clever way to, to, to play with the two different types of pieces. And also really cool how he's used a minifigure treasure chest there as sort of like a satchel where he, you know, you'd put little supplies in as you walk along with the beast. That's very clever and a really awesome little detail. Again, like I was talking about with little accent points. And so it's also really cool to, to, to give your mock a companion or a beast. That's another thing to take the simple build up to another level and make it even cooler. You know, you don't have to go ham bone or, or, or be an amazing expert builder who's been building for 17 million years and you've gained years of experience because you've trained with Zalin monks in the high mountains over Big Martin you know <laughs> yeah 
You know what I mean? Also a fantastic little head design there on this little beast companion guy. Really cool use of uh, some of the minifigure lever parts there for eyes. Looks fantastic. Uh, again, little accent point there with the head. Really cool amounts of detail there in contrast with the CCBS body there. Looks fantastic. And also, speaking of looking fantastic, this mock also has its own Lego custom built sort of diorama to go with it. And I think that's so, so cool. And again, you know, if, if you're someone who has access to a Lego store nearby, you could so easily just do one or two, probably even just one, pick a brick cup, buy a base plate, and you could have your own little diorama like this that would accompany whatever mock you've just built. You know, pick a brick has so many different parts, like stems and all sorts of trans-colored pieces. You could do like lava or jungles and trees and things like that. You know, the possibilities are endless. So definitely do that, or even if you've got system of your own, break out that system and see if you could have a little diorama that goes with it. Because again, all these little details, like the weapon, the beast, the mask on the side of the diorama, the diorama itself, this mock is so much cooler because it has all those little details. And adding so much of them together, you get an amazing mock. So creative, so clever, so original. It's awesome. That about does it for today's episode. Hopefully you enjoyed seeing three fantastic mocks. Hopefully you understood the concept of this episode. Let me know if you did, let me know if you didn't. Otherwise, be sure to check the links in the description for the mocks you saw in today's episode because there's some phenomenal builders and some phenomenal mocks. So be sure to check out more of what they've done. And also in the links in the description, you can send me a message if you have any suggestions for future themes for any episodes. Also in the description are links to my social media where you can send me a message and recommend some themes or recommend some of your own mocks or some of your friends' mocks for future episodes. Uh, and I'll put them into my backlog and then boom, they'll come into an episode one day. So, there you go. That's it. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you in the next episode. Happy building. See you guys.